What's happening guys? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. Today we are talking electric impacts. Now, not the standard electric impacts that you guys might be wanting to look for because most technicians these days, they're wanting to see the biggest, baddest setups they can possibly get. 1,300, 15, 1,600 foot pounds. These today, they're gonna be the ones that are more affordable, more economical, and better on day-to-day -day work for the automotive field. We're gonna be talking mid-torque electric impacts. So really today's automotive market, and especially with these tools, has got us perplexed to the point where bigger is always better. 900 foot-pounds, 1300 foot-pounds, the numbers that we're seeing these days for electric impacts are absolutely astronomical. I mean, the ones here recently from Matco and Snap-on, they're reaching upwards of 1500 to 1600 foot-pounds of breakaway torque. Now that's just absolutely astronomical and ridiculous really much pretty much for everyday work here in an automotive shop. Now I've been working in the automotive industry for going on 11 to 12 years now, and I'd have to say that most of the time you really do not need a tool with that much torque. Now regularly, they're not made for just regular day-to-day -day automotive car industry stuff, those big torque impacts. Uh, they're more for the heavy duty diesel and equipment and machinery kind of things for those guys to work on. Now, here in the automotive world, working on cars, light duty trucks, vans every day, these are the ones that we really want to be looking at. Ones that are a little bit more affordable, ones that are a little bit more manageable, both in size and weight, but still put out enough torque and impact for us to be able to get our job mostly done probably 95% of the time. I've been doing some testing with these. I've been using the SP1 for going on seven to eight months now. Uh, McBake, this is actually his rigid tool. He's been using it since day one of him doing it. So I've been able to grab this one off and on for that time. And I've had this Milwaukee mid torque impact for going out about a month and a half now. So been able to do some testing here for you guys to be able to see as well as give you guys some numbers on what you really might want to be looking at when looking at an electric impact. Now just cut to the chase. The big numbers that everyone really is wanting to see is max torque output. Now the low man on the totem pole here on the line on this one is going to have to be the Milwaukee Fuel Brushless Mid Torque Impact. This one the part number is 2861-20. Uh, that one is going to be coming with the tool and two five amp hour batteries. We've tested them with five amp hour, except for the rigid. It came standard with the six amp hour batteries. So uh, we gave it the benefit of the doubt because in real world, world testing, that's just what we wanted to see because that's what it came with in its kit. So back to torque numbers, the Milwaukee Fuel Brushless Mid Torque Impact, that one comes in at 600 foot pounds of breakaway torque. And yes, I know there's a difference between actual working torque and breakaway torque, but how they view and how they advertise these things in working torque is not always the same. So in their breakaway torque, we're looking at 600 foot pounds for the Milwaukee. Next one in second place stepping up is gonna actually be the rigid. This rigid is actually pretty impressive for what it is and what it costs to boot. This one actually puts out upwards of 620 foot pounds of breakaway torque. Now, later on in testing, we'll show you guys that that may not always be the case uh, reliably in that amount, but again, we'll show you guys. But on paper, that's what this one shows. And then big man on the totem pole is going to be the SP Tools 81133 mid torque impact. This one's putting out 715 foot pounds of breakaway torque. Now, when we're talking mid torque impacts, that is really, really impressive. 700 plus foot pounds out of a tool that weighs 
just barely over four pounds with a battery. Now, when we compare it to some of the bigger impacts like the Snap-on CT9075 or the Milwaukee High Torque Impact, those are coming in at over eight to eight and a half pounds. Now, personally, lugging them around all day long, those really get cumbersome when I'm taking off multiple sets of tires in the dealership. Now, weight-wise, let's go over and check out what the exact weights are on these tools as we tested them here in the shop. We got our USPS official weight scale here for you. So we've got the three and we'll test them uh, with the batteries and without the batteries. First up, the Milwaukee. Again, with the five amp hour battery. Five pounds, 5.7 ounces. There we go. Let's do the rigid. It is the rigid. Five pounds, 9.8 ounces. And of course my battery died in the middle of that one, but now we've got the SP zeroed out here. Four pounds, 15.6 ounces. So the lightest tool by quite a bit is gonna be the SP Tools one. Now let's take the batteries off of all of these and measure just the tool alone. We got the Milwaukee. Three pounds, 11.9 ounces. Rigid, that one will not stand up all on its own. Three pounds, 13 ounces on the dot. It's a little bit heavier. And then the SP, three pounds, 7.1 ounces. Again, the lightest of the three tools. This round of weight is definitely gonna go to the SP. Now let's get over to some real world testing. I had a 2011 Chevy Equinox in the shop that we were doing some rear wheel bearings to. Now, unfortunately, the footage for the rigid was lost. I was not able to recover the footage for that one, but the rigid was able to take off the fastener, but about 10 seconds slower than the other two impacts. We're gonna show you guys both on the left rear and the right rear hubs on taking the axle nuts off with these two impacts, how they look. Cadia, 34 millimeter. Now we've got the SP Tools one. Pretty close, pretty impressive. The numbers aren't really showing out in that kind of a test, but it shows that they were able to do some pretty hefty duty work in the way of rusty axle nuts, which is what we see most of the time here in the Northern States. So let's go over and do a little bit more calculated testing, and we're gonna torque them down and try to find out some numbers to which these tools may be able to function and get these fasteners loose. Now we've got our 2016 Chevy van here, and we've got six lug nuts on here. All have been torqued down to spec at 125 foot-pounds, which is a nice easy range to be able to start these at to be able to see what we're doing. So we'll do two random lug nuts a piece, starting off with the Milwaukee on this test, two of them. There we go, that's the Milwaukee. Same lug nut for it. Now that RPM on the rigid was quite a bit different. It was able to get that off quite a bit quicker. All right, let's go over to the SP. Also pretty quick, I'd say pretty comparable to the Milwaukee Fuel. In the low range test, I would have to say that the rigid probably took it just due to the high RPM range that this one has. Uh, functioning RPM range, both the SP and the Milwaukee, I believe are a RPM range of right around 2400 RPM, whereas the rigid is a functioning RPM of 2600 RPM. And that just showed it there in the low torque test. 
Now, next up on our line of testing, we've got a Ram ProMaster here. And you can see I've got the little tabs already kind of ground off the edges. These axle nuts are torqued down to 350 foot pounds. So today we're gonna go through and we're gonna see if these can actually come off. I have not taken this one off yet. This is factory torqued. Let's see right off the bat if the rigid can do it. No go, yo. No go at all. So let this one sit here and I'll go grab the other one here. We've got the Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Grab this one, see what it can do. And again, number three. No go, no go on that one. Do you think the SP can do it or did I overload what this thing can actually do? Let's see, grab the SP here. All right, SP, load the SP on. There it goes. It struggled, it really struggled, but it took it off. How about that? Just goes to show that's right about where the breaking point is for these mid torque impacts. Now that goes to show you some of the differences in the working torque values as well as their nut busting torque values. So when we're talking about the numbers that way, especially when we're slinging around some big steel like this big 46 millimeter axle nut to get that axle off, that's a lot of steel to be slinging around. Now actual working torque values is where we really want to pay attention to. Both the Milwaukee Fuel and the Rigid are both equally rated right at 450 foot pounds of working value torque. The SP right there goes to show you it's the king of the hill working at 509 foot pounds of actual working value torque. Next big thing that everybody always wants to know and need to ask, especially for here in the automotive industry, because we as technicians, we're not the nicest on our tools. Uh, what is the warranty on these? So little man on the totem pole is going to be the big one, the SP. The SP Tools Impact Wrench, this one has a two year warranty through SP Tools. Next one up is going to be the Rigid. The Rigid through wherever you guys purchase it from, uh, whether it be you get it directly from TTI or you're getting it from like Home Depot usually, uh, this one's got a three year warranty. Now, Milwaukee, that becomes the big man on the totem pole now. This one is gonna run a five year warranty on the tool and a three year warranty on the M18 battery line, which is pretty insane. But with the sheer amount of tools that Milwaukee sells, they're kind of able to afford to do that with these impacts. It's pretty impressive that they can do that for a good working running tool. Couple of other features to them. All of them have braking, so when you let off the trigger, it's going to break on the tool. The one that has the most amount of braking, I would say, has to be the Rigid, the Milwaukee. It breaks pretty evenly as well to it. Now the SP, it does have a break, but it breaks the least comparative to all the three of them. All three of them have LED lights in the front, right there, all of them pretty bright. The Milwaukee one, uh, I would say is pretty darn bright. The SP one is pretty equal to it. Now the Rigid has an extra little feature on the actual handle here. It has a built-in little pinky trigger for the light so you can turn that light on just as you want it. You don't have to actually pull the trigger to get the light to come on. Now what I love about these compared to like what the Snap-on one does and a lot of the Snap-on 14.4 lines is that you actually have to turn the tool to turn the light on. It doesn't stay on. These stay on when you touch the trigger. So just another pretty nifty little feature that they have. Another big feature is going to be power levels. Both of the Milwaukee Fuel and the Octane from Rigid are gonna have selectable power ranges. The, the Milwaukee one has one, two, and three. The Rigid one has 
one, two, and three, as well as a, an A selection, which when you use it with a socket, it goes until it hits the first hit on the hammer and it stops. So you're able to torque it after that value. That's a pretty neat thing that neither of the other two have to them, especially when you were talking about the cheapest tool. We'll get to the price here in a second. SP1, it has the battery indicators on the tool, but there is no RPM or torque range selection to it. It has all of the go, all of the time. That's another difference between the tools is the SP tool is the only one that is rated at its full power, both in forward and reverse on the tool. The other two, they're rated in more torque for reverse, obviously more breakaway torque, as well as less torque for on features. But the SP, same on as it is off. Now let's talk batteries. Obviously king of the hill on the battery line is gonna be the Milwaukee because they're the first ones to come to the game with this and pretty much any manufacturer that has either an 18 volt or a 20 volt lineup is paying royalties to Milwaukee for their design of their batteries, which is pretty awesome, pretty crazy, but they do a great job at it. Battery life on these are fantastic. Again, the rigid one, it's a little bit different because we did the testing on this one with the six amp hour battery because I really didn't pay for it. McBake had the tool and that's what it came with was the six amp hour batteries. Uh, a little bit off on that one, but as far as battery life, the Milwaukee and the rigid one were very, very close. The rigid one had, I would say, just slightly less on the way of battery line than the Milwaukee one. The SP one, I would say just ever so slightly beat out the Milwaukee one for the top spot on that. Usually I was able to go a full week without having to charge this one all the way. Now, how about charge time? Charging time on the rigid was right around 45 minutes or so from fully dead to full charge. Obviously it's kind of hard to compare apples to apples because again, six amp hour battery. The Milwaukee one charged in right around 38 minutes, 38 to 40 minutes on the full charge uh, from zero to full. The SP one was right at 41 minutes to be able to fully charge their five amp hour battery. Now last but not least, what you guys all wanna know is how much do they cost? price range for these are actually fantastic when you compare them to the big Mamma Jamma tools. So we're going to talk the lowest one coming in at the most inexpensive for you guys to get was the Rigid. This one you're going to find in a couple of different places for a couple of different prices. Obviously you find some sales on some tools, but on average, this one is going to cost you right around $340 for the tool two batteries and a charger. Now, not very often can you find a kit with all that together, but you can find two batteries and a charger as well as the bare tool. Comes out to about $340, $350 right around there. Number two on the most affordable one is gonna be the Milwaukee. This one comes in at $399.99, one penny under 400. That gets you the tool, two five amp hour batteries, as well as their quick charging system. I think it's a great buy for what it is. That one you can find on pretty much anywhere, Amazon, um, Home Depot, wherever they sell Milwaukee tools, it's pretty universal to find that price there. Coming in just a little bit higher than both of the other ones is gonna be the SP. The SP is not by any means really out, out of the park, but it is a little bit more expensive. This one comes in at $419.99 over at sptoolsusa.com. That one comes with the tool, two five amp hour batteries, and the charger. However, SP also does have another kit available for you, which comes in right at the same cost as the Milwaukee 399, but that one, you're gonna get two four amp hour batteries instead of two of the five amp hour batteries with that kit. Now, of course, you guys wanna see lots of testing with longevity and how long these things are gonna last, how easy it's gonna to be to claim the warranty on them if something does happen to them. I'm just gonna to have to keep you guys up to date on that one. Like I said, the longest one that I have is gonna be the SP Tools Impact. I've had that one by far the longest. We've been using the Rigid, the second longest here in the shop, and the newer one to the bunch coming in at the last couple of weeks is gonna be the Milwaukee Hat Finch Mid Torque Impact. So we're gonna to have to keep you guys updated as we use them more and more here in the shop. 
Well guys, that's about all the information that I have for you today on these mid-torque impacts. Hopefully this has given you guys some great information on purchasing some of the tools that you might actually need in the shop rather than the ones that everybody wants to get as far as the high torque, the big mamba jammas, the things that will get any bolt, any nut off in the shop. If what you guys are looking for is a tool that is both affordable and is able to do just about everything you guys need here in the shop, you might want to take a look Look at the mid torque impact line this is going to be about the best selection that you guys can find on the market today yes there are a couple of other contenders in there dewalt has one i believe makita Ryobi has one, but of course, they're gonna be somewhat comparable to what you see here today. You guys can check those out anytime online, of course. But this lineup has been able to show you guys the differences in cost, effectiveness, and warranty on the tools that you guys are able to find in most places in the automotive field. Like I said, we're gonna be using this on and on day-to-day -day life here in the shop so if you have any questions at all or any comments make sure you throw them down in the comments below i usually like to respond to as many of those as i can and if i miss something in the information in this video please feel free to ask any other questions on these tools again links to all three of them will also be down in the description below so if you're looking for them i will put the links down there for you guys to check them out Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this content. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're doing awesome here on our subscriber count and we're rocking up some more to be able to give you guys some more awesome content. Make sure you turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, great content just like this one today. I appreciate you guys tuning in and as always, you guys stay awesome.